Thank you. Okay, so again, warm welcome to all of you. And I'm personally very happy today of having here with us uh, Elsa Rodriguez and, Car and Anne Cortaverria uh, from Pueblos Remotos. And I'm just going to move this, so uh, in case you want to get to know more, we are going to get to know more, but here we have the QR code uh, to, you know, of the organization. And I'm going to start first uh, introducing briefly both Elsa and Anne because they are going to share with share with us a presentation of what they do. But I think that it's important uh, to you know to introduce the two of them and get to know them a little bit more better. So because you have a, such a long and long uh, work experience, ex uh, ent entrepreneurial experience, I'm literally going to read this because I had to summarize your fantastic, fantastic experiences. So I'm going to start with Elsa. Elsa is a social entrepreneur based in the wonderful island of Tenerife, Canary Islands, Spain. And she is the co-founder of Pueblos Remotos and also the founder of Futural Tourism. And she has a broad and vast expertise on the field of sustainable tourism management. And over 15 years, she's been working in this area, also in international commerce, and also giving advice to different governments around the world. And among, among different degrees, she's a graduate from the Universidad Carlos III in Madrid, SECO and Monash University. And now, uh, Anne, Anne Cortaverria, she is also working as a project manager currently at uh, Pueblos Remotos, originally from the Basque Country in Spain. Uh, she's focusing mostly on community reactivation, creation of strategic partnerships, and opening new businesses to revitalize rural areas through young digital talent. And as we have already mentioned, uh, she is also a graduate from Mondragon University in the Basque Country, and she has finished, she just told me, uh, her master's, her thesis uh, on the topic, on the key topic of revival of rural environments through youth talent. So uh, thank you very much, Elsa, Anne. Uh, on behalf of Youth Proactive, it's a pleasure having you with us today. So I think, Anne, uh, Elsa, I'm going now to stop uh, sharing because I know that you want to share the screen. Yes. Um, let me share first. Sure. So, so first of all, thank you so much for, for the invitation um, to present today. We're very happy to be here and, and really glad to have the opportunity to talk about what we do. Um, so thanks so much, uh, Teresa and the team for, for putting this together. So as Teresa mentioned, uh, I'm going to start just introducing a little bit what we do with Pueblos Remotos and how we contribute to move forward um, uh, the youth um, the rural youth, right? So how do we work with them and, and what do we are planning, what are we planning to do as well? So Anne will, will take on later on, on what specifically we do with the youth. Um, so Pueblos Remotos, uh, in English, it would be something like remote villages, remote towns, uh, was born three years ago. Uh, I, I will explain a little bit uh, who we are. So we are a social entrepreneurship. Um, sorry, my screen. Okay. <laughs> and we focus in reactivating rural environments, rural areas by empowering local entrepreneurs. So we always work with local entrepreneurs. And what we want to do is to promote a more conscious and more sustainable tourism. Okay. So I will explain a bit how we do it. So we have uh, denominated this term connected rurality, which for us is what moves us forward. And it means connecting people, connecting mm -hmm. local entrepreneurs with digital talent in this case. So uh, digital talent for us are remote workers, women entrepreneurs, and also students or youth. Okay, so that Anna will explain later. We, we always co-create everything together with the community where we are, in the town where we are working. And we, we always uh, focus on giving visibility to the rural ecosystem, okay? So we, we believe also because we were born in the Canary Islands. And if you have heard of our islands, we are very much a mass tourism um, mm -hmm. destination. So what we are trying to do is to demonstrate that there is a different way of visiting the islands of uh, learning about the islands and 
we want to give that space to the rural areas as well, you know, and, and how do how we respect the, the environment and the place we are visiting. Our team, so uh, my, my business partner, Carlos and I started the business um, three years ago. And along the way, we have had the pleasure to, to have Anne on the team. And she's, she's here with us and she will talk in a bit. Uh, so she's um, mostly leading these youth uh, projects that we are uh, putting together. Um, yeah, and she, she's actually finishing her, her project, her, her final project with us. And so that's why she's going to talk in a bit about, about what she has found out and what she's doing with us which I think is the most important part of the whole presentation. I'm just here to, to give you an overview and respond any questions as well. So the problem that we try to fix is that uh, we have found out in, in some uh, studies that 75% of people who live in rural areas believe that there are no opportunities for them. So we were so shocked to learn this that we were, what can we do to change this? How How can we really create rural areas or how can we uh, reactivate rural areas so that they are innovative and connected places full of opportunities. So that's our vision in the long term, right? Um, how do we actually achieve this or how do we want to achieve this? We, we work in three areas, but the main one and the first that we are um, known for is experiences. We actually um, work on different kind of experiences. So we 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 do experiences from one week to three weeks. Uh, we do experiences for remote workers. We take them to rural areas and connect them with uh, rural entrepreneurs. We do the same with women entrepreneurs as well from all different parts of Europe. We also work with um, students and we take them to, to rural areas to help these rural entrepreneurs um, resolve their challenges. So there are different kinds of experiences, but the purpose is always the same, going to contribute to the rural areas and, and actually help them to reactivate, to, to improve their businesses and, and so on. Okay, so that's the big area of experiences. We also do some consultancy, helping destinations, um, rural destinations to, to improve as well. And we do also trainings, talks and so on. So these are the three areas where we work on, but today we will mostly focus on, on the experiences. Okay, or that's our visible part, let's say. So that's all from my side. Uh, Anne, if you Perfect. want to take it on. Thank you. Thank you, Elsa, for the introduction. And thank you uh, for your project, for inviting me in, yeah, uh, telling us to come here. So I will make a short introduction of the, which are the keys, the the, team, the 10 keys, more or less, we have defined in polar remotes to in order to attract and empower youth in rural areas. Wait. So, uh, yeah, starting, thank you. <laughs> starting from the first one, we will be creating community and fostering social relations. The second one, improving mental health. Then offering support for emancipation and access to, to housing. Improving the narrative of rural areas. The fifth one, taking advantage of the opportunities and flexibility offered by the remote working. Then uh, improving the connection between academic institutions and the labor market. Mm -hmm. The last ones uh, offering employment opportunities. Encourage youth participation, creating new communication channels and listening spaces spaces for for youth. And the last one, um, well, the yeah, the other one, promoting entrepreneurship. And here we have the mobility opportunities. So yeah, I am just doing it shortly. Then I have, um, if you want to speak more about these topics, uh, I think we can have more time for that. But yeah, if I start, I, I start uh, speaking about each one, <laughs> uh, maybe it would be so long. <laughs> so as a short, in a short way, I think these ones are the the ten cases we have defined. So then let's share if you are agree or or not. Mm -hmm. Perfect. So for that, we have applied three or three uh, different type of projects, like different strategies uh, in our work. 
So the first one would be the workshops and events. So here we create spaces where youth connect with other social agents to the dialogue and debate. So in this way, we create spaces to share experiences and concerns of the people who participate, uh, creating community and adding value both in the development of these people and in the local area. So as an example, last week, uh, for example, uh, yeah, we created an event in which we brought together university students and women working in rural areas to mm -hmm. discuss um, issues in this case related to entrepreneurship, challenges and the job opportunities and that these women uh, find in rural areas. So in the second, the second type of project would be about immersive and educational experiences. And in this case, we connect youth directly with rural areas. So we organize some experiences, um, similar ones that uh, the uh, ones that uh, Sahar, uh, mentioned before. And in this case, uh, the experiences allow them to allow youth to learn about the reality of uh, the rural areas, connecting also with the local entrepreneurs and creating solutions based on real facts. So we work on methodologies uh, like design thinking, for example, you know, you are related with this, but we can, uh, we really uh, work a lot with this. And so that we contribute uh, to the local community directly mm -hmm. and also with uh, working with entrepreneurs. And we, we do this by living um, with other young people. So we connect different kinds of young people and we also create some recreational activities that are fun also for these experiences and so on. So, so far we have collaborated with the University of La Laguna in Tenerife. Uh, we have carried out two experiences in different towns. The first one would be Garachico and the second one El Tanque. And that's uh, the last experience was last, last week. I couldn't attend there because I was here in the Basque country, but Elsa attended. So if you have any question, recent question, you can make here as well. And yeah, so these two experiences have they have been great. Uh, we have had really good uh, feedback. So now we are planning to carry out more at the state and also um, yeah, even European level. So the last one would be the the European project. And in this case, we organize exchanges with other countries in order to understand the other realities, make comparis comparisons, and learn from success stories. And then um, the objective is to bring back these ideas to apply them in specific territories. So until now, uh, in this case, we have applied for two different projects. The first one will be a KA2 project about cooperation partnership in youth together with other four countries. And on the other hand, we have applied for, for an, another opportunity that was called um, youth, for outer, youth for Outermost Regions. And in this case, we have uh, been collaborating with an association in an organization in Tenerife. And the objective is to, what we are planning is to organize trainings and hackathons about um, open social innovation in this case. So I don't know if I've explained well, but yeah, this is a little bit the summary of everything that we are working. So if you want to continue with this, Elsa? Yeah, so th thank you, Anne. That was great. Um, I, and again, if you have any questions, we, we will have time now to, to respond to any questions. Yes, um, in, in terms of future visions or what we have in mind for rural youth empowerment and how we want to continue um, contribute to this, uh, we actually, our plan is to, to keep connecting our participants. So um, when we talk about remote workers or women entrepreneurs with the youth in rural areas, okay? So as I said at the beginning, we have experiences and it has just explained what kind of experience we do with uh, youth. So we take them to these rural areas for five days, they connect and so on. So that's taking the youth to the rural areas. But the... The, and we will keep doing that, but the, the main point here in our future um, objectives is to, whatever we do is also to, to connect with the youth that is already in those towns, okay? So one thing is taking the youth there, but a different thing is to what do we do with the youth that is already in the rural areas? And that is something that we have been doing um, almost since the beginning we started because we really believe in, in, the, in the power of youth. And 
for example, here on the left, we have uh, the, this picture is the group of remote workers that was, this was in Galicia two weeks ago. So we took a group of remote workers. They were there in this town in Carnota, in Costa da Morte for three weeks. And during those three weeks, uh, they collaborated directly with the students at the high school there. So they helped them uh, with developing so these two pictures are from there, okay? So one thing was helping them develop this project that we're working on. So that's where you see all these posits and so on, working with them. But we also went to the unit, to the high school and, and give a talk um, to all the students there. So they shared their experience. It's a way for the youth to understand that there are so many opportunities out there and that they don't really need to leave ta the town to 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 start a business or to work for X company, um, they can also stay there or they can go learn and come back and, and contribute to their own um, territory. So we do more like an inspiration type of work, uh, but we also help them to develop um, actual projects. Okay, so we work both ways. We take the youth to the rural areas to contribute, but we also work with the youth that is already there. I'm not sure if um, it's understood, but that's how we keep, how we plan to keep going and, and, and working on the three business or three kind of projects that Anne mentioned earlier, which are these three, okay? So that's our future vision. And that's it from our side. Thank you, thank you very much, Elsa and Anne. I'm going to share now my screen and I think that the next step is that we focus a little bit on the different free questions that you have already addressed uh, through your through your presentation. And in the case that you know you want to add more details into the conversation, and even if the participants that I already seen some questions on the chat are you know all the participants you are more than welcome to include you know questions and then we will address them in the Q and A. Uh, but uh, Anne, uh, Elsa, you have already answered to our, you know, main fair questions. We have, we are super aware of your impact ambition, but more specifically, and I'm going to now, now to make this small so people can read the question. Um, this connects with your impact ambition. For from my side, this was very clear in the in the in the presentation. For me, you have mentioned this: seventy five percent of people living in rural areas believe that there are no opportunities, that there is no way, you know, of, you know, creating a sustainable, durable future where they live in these rural communities. And you have this vast experience uh, and you have created a project as co-founder of Pueblo Remotos that really reverses, no, this, this assumption of this 75%. So um, more specifically, and you have mentioned these three areas, but Again, could you please maybe elaborate a little bit more about, you know, how you integrate this idea of sustainable tourism, remote work, work and how you can empower this long term? Because you just mentioned this, you know, training you have in Galicia, uh, that you are really trying to make young people understand that there are long term solutions that economic growth, systemic growth is possible in rural areas. So um, could you please maybe add, add a little bit more of detail? and even give us a little bit more of examples based on all these, you know, freaky areas that you are, you know, developing in Pueblo Remotos. Okay, so I'm I'm just going to explain uh, with an example because I think that's easier to, to understand. Um, so I'm, I'm going to take the example of Galicia because it's, it's the most recent one and I think it, it actually includes everything we mm -hmm. have mentioned. So this is this type of experience is, is the experience that we started with. So both Carlos and I, we work remotely for many years. So we are remote workers. We both love rural areas and, and I'm a sustainable tourism advocate uh, for many years as well. So what do we do? We take, in this case, we took a group of 10 people who work remotely. They don't know each other. They come from different parts of Spain. In this case, in this, when we do experiences in Spain, we do it in Spanish normally, unless it's a specific European project or something like that. But in this case, it was everything in Spanish. So we have, we had people coming from, uh, from Madrid, from Valencia, from Barcelona, from Valladolid. We even had um, someone from the 
Czech Republic, but she speaks perfect Spanish. So we have people from everywhere, but they all communicate in Spanish, okay? So we had these 10 people coming to, to this little town uh, in, in the coast of Galicia, and they stayed there for three weeks. What does it have, what do we do in three weeks? During the day, they work in their remote works, okay? So they all keep working in, 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 in whatever they do for, for a living. And then in the in the afternoons, in the evenings, we do activities. Mm -hmm. uh, some days we go and visit rural entrepreneurs. So we we at least work together with three rural entrepreneurs. For example, we went to visit an artisan, Nacho Porto, who is a ceramic artisan. So we learn about his story, and we actually did our own uh, ceramic. Um, played, we, we painted it and so on. So it's a way of also understanding and giving value to, to the work that artisans do, okay? So we do that, we connect with rural entrepreneurs and they also connect among themselves. So we do some skill sharing activities so that they also um, connect or, or have synergies among them because they all have different uh, profiles. We have software developers, we have marketing specialists, um, coach, wellness coaching, uh, whatever, you know, different uh, mm -hmm. professions, okay? So different profiles. So they all really have uh, a lot of um, things to share and complement each other. And then the third thing we do is we contribute to the local ecosystem. So we do some volunteer actions. We went and clean a beach. Uh, and with that plastic, we actually created also some pieces of art. And we also work in a local challenge. That local challenge in this case was helping the high, high school students develop their own entrepreneurship uh, or entre um, yeah, their own project because they wanted to, to, it was part of their, their curriculum in, in the school, they had to, to start a business, let's say, you know, they had to come up with a business plan. So the, the remote workers helped them with the business plan, they helped them to pitch the business plan, how, how do you present this? Uh, so we had three, th three sessions with them to help them with that. And then one day we went to the school to give the talks, that picture that I show. Um, so they, they had this inspiration moment where uh, all the students could ask them. Because imagine all these 10 people from different parts yeah. telling their story, completely, you know, different ones, different professions, different things they do. Is, is really something that opened their eyes mm -hmm. and, and they had a lot of questions for them and they start questioning whether they really need to leave the rural areas or not or how can they contribute to their own towns. So it's, it's a matter of also giving them um, the, the tools to, 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 to do different things and, and, and to have and not think that the only solution is to move to the cities and, mm -hmm. and go to university, which is perfectly fine, but that's not the only way. Or you can do that and then do something else. So I don't know if now it's better yeah. understood. And and in the long term, we, we continue, uh, we measure everything, uh, mm -hmm. all the impact that we have. If anyone is interested, we have a, a, a report, an impact mm -hmm. report that we just launched uh, two months ago with all the impact that we have generated so far. So, and we have a, we have it also in English. If, if anyone is interested, we can share it here on the on the chat. I, I think we... we... It's, it, it can be a great idea. I read the impact report and I was amazed to see, you know, this, this vision because uh, personally, when, when I think in this correlation that you are doing, you know, entrepreneurs on the one side, three weeks working together, addressing, you know, local challenges together and the element of connecting with the local youth, this is very powerful. And this is the moment that, you know, this Eureka maybe happens for a lot of young people that they reconsider their lives and their futures. And uh, definitely this is extremely powerful. So yeah, thank you. Thank you, Elsa, for, for giving us the example of Galicia. And I'm going now to move to the second question, which is more connected to Anne's work. And Anne, you, may, you were mentioning in the presentation this maybe different key areas uh, and you have, you know, 
doing all your research with Pueblos Remotos, which definitely this has been probably a, an amazing ethnographic experience in a sense, and also real world life experience. Coming from Mondragon, you have experienced that from the beginning, I, I, I know. Uh, but more focusing this question, let's, let's see a little bit more of impact, rural revitalization, rural revival, going to do this small so people can read. So again, pacing this research that you have been conducting, you just presented now your research, what are the most effective strategies? You have addressed this already, but just to elaborate, to attract and empower young entrepreneurs in rural areas and a specific case of Pueblo Remotos, and I think this connects with these key areas, 10 key areas that you were mentioning, how these key areas work in practice? How do we connect? I, don't, I remember you mentioned mental health, um, so many dimensions. So how can we interlink all of this? Yeah, right. So I think there are a lot of different, no, there are so different topics uh, that are working together, but uh, yeah, they are super related uh, one of to the other. And I think I will continue doing the, an example that Elsa, Elsa has said, because I think one of the, like the first uh, step sometimes is to, to know the reality, no? And that sometimes we don't know the reality or we think that the reality is another one. Mm -hmm. So, um, the same as we do with Pueblo Remotos, um, getting to know people in place, different places where they connect and they know that they, they literally meet with the reality and then they meet with people that uh, have some case studies or they, they are some case studies or there are, there are examples that people uh, work in uh, effective um, projects. Uh, I think this is uh, super important because uh, we have that, um, we have worked that with the, um, the last experiences we did uh, last week, right? And um, yeah, in this case, um, this, uh, these ten, 10 young people that uh, they met there, they um, they knew which were the, the problems that uh, people were facing there, which were the people that are actually working there, and there are some opportunities that maybe they can go there and, and keep on that. Um, and also sometimes contributing directly to this, I, we, I, we have the we have um, talked a lot about this, and I think until now. But contributing, I think, um, personal is also something that really empowers you, know, Because if you are part of the of the change, this also um, helps not just to the the local uh, areas. Also, it helps you and um, it gives you empowerment mm -hmm. to um yeah, to keep on that, and maybe change is also your perspective because that's, for example, what has happened to me until now. And during this, my degree, I have been working on different topics related to uh, entrepreneurship. But uh, every time they were talking about uh, rural um, topics, they were quite of showing us like a boring, um, no, boring vision, or that there are not that the same that happens a lot. Maybe well, until now, uh, for me, it's been like that. Maybe for others, not. But for me, it's been like that. And um, but anyways, um, there are other there were other people that. Um, we're making a lot of projects and super interesting initiatives. And um, I have been listening more and more about this kind of topics until now. And when I did uh, my first um, trip to, to South Korea with university, I realized that they were also working on these topics, even they were in South Korea, no? And it's, I, I started thinking like, well, so this is something that it's not just in, at my hometown, also in other areas around the world. So that's that's a topic that um, it's super interesting to to learn more about. And let's see what can we do as youth and other people. What can you do with uh, for youth? No. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I don't know if I have an answer to your question. Yes, but... def definitely. And and I think I think you mentioned something also very powerful moving to the local area, moving to the place where challenges are happening, where problems that at the end of the day is a challenge that you need to address and getting to know the reality. And as, as you mentioned, like you have these different 10 key areas, but everything is so interlinked that you cannot address one issue without understanding what's going on on the other side. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's that's fantastic. I'm really <laughs> looking forward to reading your thesis. Mm -hmm. really, let's really. See, let's see. no no let, no, yeah. no if you publish it whatever let, contact us okay i'm 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 okay. that me person i love it no 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 but but <laughs> and the south korea the south korea topic i think this also connects with uh what you were mentioning you know european projects uh, this big vision no understanding that challenges are everywhere no and and 
you know, what you think that it's happening in your hometown, maybe it's happening hundreds of kilometers away. And you also learn no, from other people's experiences. Yeah, definitely. And I think that sometimes, uh, for example, I have heard a lot of times that uh, if you want to work in this kind of topics, you need to be established in a rural area or you need to be born in a rural area or these topics, mm -hmm. no? And I think there are a lot of different uh, options because I'm from a, I was born in a town that's uh, 11,000 people. There are, for some people, it's super big. For others, it's super small, no? So I think there are so different ways of uh, knowing about uh, rural areas. I mean, yeah. rural areas in Canary Islands, it's super different about and then rural areas in other parts of Spain, for example. So we can speak about rural areas in general if there are different kind of uh, yeah. types, types of rural areas, no? So we can work from rural areas and work uh, remotely, but taking into account uh, which are the consequences also for working remotely. And otherwise, we can also work from uh, other areas. And then, I mean, there are a lot of different yes. uh, ways to, to work and contribute. But yes. yeah, it's hard. I agree. No. I, I agree, and, and I agree that, that, that in, even in Spain, no, uh, you have different visions of what is a rural area. And yeah, I'm also from a town that it's the size of yours. And for some people, it's considered a rural town. For some people, it's not. So I think that having these different projects you have, you go to Galicia, Basque, uh, Basque Country, it also, you know, helps no, to address the different conceptions of what is rural area at the end. Yes. So you... I'm moving to the last question that we have prepared. And again, you have addressed this in your wonderful presentation. And I'm going to rephrase a little bit then this question. Uh, more in the sense of, you know, we have talked about future visions for rural youth empowerment. And this is a youth goal webinar that is focused on the future of youth in the context of rural places. So I would try to rephrase this question connecting more, you know, with the with the vision of future that we are already trying to, you know, empower in youth proactive, but these future generations, what would be what would be your message to them? What are the visions, you know, to continuing empowering rural youth, context specific context of pueblos remotos, of course, sustainable tourism, remote work, but what would be the message that we can bring nowadays to the young people that maybe are in a small town? They think that there are no options. They feel that this 75% that uh, Elsa mentioned, no? that they think, OK, I have no alternatives. I need to move to a big city. Uh, what can I do? If you have been born in a place like this, or, or, or as Anne was mentioning, you decide to move to a place like this. Something very common following COVID, by the way, people moving to rural areas. So what would be your, your, your message for them, especially based in the context of sustainable tourism, remote work and creating sustainable and lasting communities, rural communities. Maybe you can address this question together. Open a space. Okay. Um, I mean, <laughs> you have mentioned too, too many things I at know, the same time. I know, so I know. I, I'm, I'm going to try to to focus a little bit and then Anne can add whatever sure, uh, sure. opinion Thank she you. has. Thank you. Um, so if I were, to if I was talking with um, youth in, in rural areas who live there. Um, and, and we did this recently, right? So the first thing I would say is <laughs> actually be, be proactive, right? Um, some, some youth, um, they wait for opportunities to come their door. Uh, but we really need to to go and find those and find those opportunities, right? So be proactive, look for information, ask um don't don't settle with whatever people around you is doing or are talking about just go farther ask people you like or who inspire you how they get how they get there right uh, so really look for options because there are so many opportunities uh, and people who are proactive i see a lot of young people who have been in i don't know how many programs um, in Europe, in, in Spain, in, in other parts of the world, or they have gone to exchanges and so on, because they really are proactive and they, they look proactively for that, right? Whereas you have then some, it's also the personality, of course, but um, yeah, some people just wait for things to come to their door. That's on one side, okay? So that's 
the the themselves being proactive and, and trying to look for opportunities and realizing that there is so much they can do. Because uh, as human beings, we always tend to see what we don't have, right? What we are missing, but we don't see everything that positive that we have around us. And, and whenever I go to a town, I'm like, look, you have so many good things here. You have uh, tranquility, you have uh, great, um, you know, uh, your garden, I always say, you know, your patio or your garden is these beautiful mountains or wherever you are, right? So this nature, we don't have this in cities. Mm -hmm. uh, people always think that the opportunities are in the cities and it's like, wait, uh, you don't have to go to a city to to find a good opportunity. When we were having this discussion with the women and uh, rural women that Anne talked about um, earlier, that was last week. For me, it was, oh my God, I had uh, the best moment putting together women entrepreneurs with um, university students because you the women entrepreneurs were talking about everything they were lacking, how in the they don't have opportunities, how they don't have good trainings. They always have to go to the city to get a good training. And then the students were like, look, but you have so, so much uh, nature here. We all want to come and, and spend more time in this place. It's beautiful. But they don't realize everything they have because they are always looking at what they don't have, right? So the same with, with this, um, realizing how much how many opportunities there are in these rural areas and, and how, but of course, <laughs> there are always, you, you cannot, it's difficult to do it by yourself, right? So you need support, you need support from 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 the actual town hall or, or the actual um, education system and so on. So, you know, there are some variables that actually don't depend on their own, on their own students, but that's a big part of it. The other <laughs> I'm going to open another debate here, but I also think that it has a lot, a lot to do with education these youth uh, receive from their own families, right? Sometimes are they, their own families who tell them, you don't have anything to do in this town, get out of here, go find something in the city, no? So is there, the education they receive all, not always help um help them to to actually stay and and do something in the in their own town they think that they have to leave right mm -hmm. so this narrative as anna was saying is key you we have to change this narrative and there are a lot of positive aspects of being in the in the rural areas and as you said after uh covid um this has become even more more clear so from from the remote workers that went to this experience in galicia two weeks ago some of them are, one of them is already uh, planning to live there. So she's, she's actually, she stayed longer and she's planning to, to, to buy a house and everything because really she, she cannot stand living in Madrid anymore, for example. Um, so you, you see this clear on how, how people look at the rural areas as a potential place to, to, to live their lives. Mm -hmm. So, but you have to work on both sides. Thank you. Thank you very much, Elsa, for this. Thank you. Definitely. Yeah, and just something I would like to add. I think what everything you have said, Elsa, definitely true, no? Mostly the, the negative aspect that we always think about and changing all that, that mindset and all this. But I think that, um, for example, uh, knowing that we are not alone, no? That, of course, many times it's not easy to, to find ways or whatever, but there are some, no? So, just knowing also that you are not alone, that there are other people that are uh, the same as like you, know, that they are living the same situation or even in, they are in the closer town, they are in another one, but there are a lot of uh, different Erasmus Plus projects, for example, that they have attended, they are, they've been uh, amazing for me and knowing a lot of people that uh, come from different rural areas and, and are, um, that have the same vision and mission and values no, that they have. I think that's super interesting to empower yourself as well. Um, and yeah, there are a lot of uh, online webinars and the one that they have attended last some months ago, for example, there was a project called Place Out about regeneration of uh, non non urban um, areas. And I have met a lot of people from Italy, from different parts of the, of Europe that were living in a in a town and were sharing their experiences. 
and even I was in my house doing that online. No, it was also super interesting and super powerful. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I I, I feel so connected with both of experiences uh, because, uh, as you mentioned, Elsa, that many times, even if we live in a beautiful place, we tend to see what we lack and we don't appreciate what we already have. Again, I'm from a town, beautiful town in the mountains, and I didn't see the mountains for the 18 years I lived there. I didn't notice that we had mountains. <laughs> and this sounds so surreal, but it's because uh, sometimes, you know, the mindset education that you are supposed to live, you get education and maybe you come back or not. And then probably this is a shift of mindset and connecting with Anne's experience, no? all these courses, Erasmus Plus, this widens your horizons. And then you realize that you have beautiful mountains. <laughs> there are ways of building a future. So I, I cannot say more than thank you because I think I'm speaking on behalf of everybody here, the ones that join and the ones that I promise will watch this recording. Uh, this is very inspiring. And I genuinely believe that you are opening a door to a sustainable and different way of living and by doing something that you know it's very empower it, it builds on empowerment and i i just wish you all the best and please continue doing it we will follow your work uh, con con constantly and i really i really want to say thank you but it's not the end i just check now there is a question by the way thank you elsa you have here uh, elsa has shared with us the impact report, I really encourage all of you to read it because it's like, it's beautifully written and I love the images and how you present the facts. It's, it's a really nice document to read. And now uh, Mr. Jafar from Tunisia, Padilla Association has written a questions and it's, ah, this is hmm, good one. What types of partnership, public, private, international can be effective in supporting initiatives for rural youth? So I think this is more focused on the partnership area and probably access to funding, I guess. Thank you, Mr. Mm -hmm. Safar, for this question, by the way. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, this is a very interesting question because definitely um, everything we have talked about, and I'm going to talk first about Pueblos Remotos and the support that we receive, and then Anne might want to add um, what other kinds of supports are there because she she has done a, a quite a depth research on that. But in terms of Pueblos Remotos, actually everything you have seen is always with support. Okay, so um, it's very difficult for us to, to do all these experiences without any support. Um, for example, in the case of the experience that experiences that we do specifically for students, for the university students, there we receive the support from the from the university itself. But it's, there is always funding behind. So in this case, for example, is uh, Banco Santander, which is um, a, a commercial bank here in, in Spain. So they support this kind of projects. OK, so we have this public private, which is the university plus the bank that has been supporting us. But we always collaborate on the ground with local associations. OK, so when we were talking about this uh, activity we had with women entrepreneurs, we actually had had it with a local together with a local association called Generation 21, and they actually work uh, in helping women um, go back to the to the labor market. So that's why they were part of this activity. So they brought the women and we brought the, the students and that's how we collaborated with each other. And we actually for that specific activity, we actually got um, some funding from um, Ideo actually was Anne who who found them. Um, so what is this Anne? Was this national level or? Uh... Yeah, it was national level. It was called Ideo, which is a foundation of uh, the Canaries. Exactly. So it, then it was regional level probably. Yeah. So oh, yeah. so yeah. So we try to, as you see, we we try to combine different things so that we can put together these kind of activities. When we talk about the experiences where we take um, remote workers um, to, to rural areas, we actually, and because we, we stay there for three weeks, right? We give a lot of visibility to these towns uh, that otherwise nobody knows about them. And we actually get support. Uh, we, 
it's very necessary for us to get support in this case from from the town hall or from the um the deputation i'm not sure like the the yeah the municipality or or whatever it's it, it really depends on the context where we are but we try to get this um and we also believe that the public sector should be involved in this kind of experiences right so always there is always a combination between public and private and local associations okay so that's that's our model uh in the case of of remote workers they actually pay for the experience so they actually contribute so that's the private part okay so they it's the commercial part so we always have a combination of of funds otherwise this would be impossible uh if we wouldn't have uh support it, it would be very difficult for us because it takes us around five six months to put an experience together we have just told you we have just told you you here in in 10 minutes mm -hmm. but it, there is a lot of work behind putting this together is a three weeks show um so a lot of rehearsals and and whatnot beforehand and and afterwards nice. wow. yeah and the last thing just to add um in a, a european level level we have uh, we've found a salto maybe for sure you know about that but salto uh, the platform yeah we have uh, contacted with the um, the partnership we have been uh, creating with the for the first uh, European project I talk about, um, we found found these associations by Salto as well. So it's been part of the European Erasmus Plus funds. Mm -hmm. Okay. Wow. This is excellent as a model. Eh? All these different sources of funding, complementarity among. Wow. Thank you. Thank you for the explanation. V very useful. Very useful for all of us. Well, I wonder if we have more questions. Okay. Ah, Marina. Marina. Hi, good morning. Well, it's it's kind of like a, a comment of like, um, well, thank you for for the webinar and all and the initiative. It, it's super interesting. And I think that it's something that um, we can share with like our communities, like, at the at, I'm especially also from a small town uh in Spain and and I think that, that all these initiatives can can be super inspiring for for the community and it's kind of like well congratulations and also um kind of like a question but it's more I think that you've already been mentioning a lot about the partnerships and and how you're connecting not only like rural youth but also like entrepreneurs and connecting them my main question which is kind of like the challenge that um, with other partners that we have we face is in terms of like actually engaging the youth no and actually like um, engaging them in a sustainable way um, so what would like some tips that you could give us that have worked for you in, sen in the sense of like um, connecting not only the youngsters who are engaged and this proactive that the this proactive attitude that we were mentioning no but also so diversifying the the audience that we that we want to target. Thank you very much in advance. Yeah, that's, that's very, I don't know, Anne, if you want to go first uh, as a as a young mm -hmm. representative here, maybe you can address that better. Maybe Marina, you also have the so even though you, you have made the question, you have also the answers, no? But yeah, thank, thank you for sharing it. And yeah, I, I think sometimes this is the, the most complicated, one of the most complicated, no? After making all the efforts and creating all the projects and whatever, it's finding the people. But so yeah, mainly uh, working with schools, universities, places where there are people already, it's easier um, to engage youth that has worked for us no, until now and also working with associations or organizations like youth organizations that already have some youth that are interested in, expo in some topics or they are proactive so yeah I think uh, working with proactive youth is easier of course than working with not proactive no and but maybe um, yeah for example attending to events or uh, attending to ex other experiences, you can always find some people that maybe at first they are not not really productive or or yes, and then they keep on that or they change their mindset mindset or keeping con connected with people. Um, it's all something that that helps to engage. 
Yeah, I, I think one of the, uh, just to add to what Anna was saying, because, um, you know, even when you, you go through the process, you, we actually interview all this, the students that are interested in participating in our experiences, we actually interview them to make sure that we have that proactive motivation that we need. Um, so we do a filter first, but again, you do the filter, but sometimes mm -hmm. uh, when you get there, they, they don't show what you were expecting. So how do you make them engage? And we, we actually, um, I don't know if you all have heard about um, leadership, personalities and, and leadership, collaborative leadership um, workshops and so on. But we do this kind of, um, it's, a, it's a personality test at the end of the day so that everyone knows how the rest, um, how they behave, what their essence is, and so that we know how to communicate among us, right? Because you can have some people that are super extrovert and, and rational, but then you have the, the introvert that, really don't feel comfortable sharing. So how, how do we all come together as a team? Because then they, they have to work together as well, right? So, so getting to know how they are help us to also create a communication that, that everyone feels comfortable. Um, so I feel like that is key that they all can, can share and, and, and contribute from their own essence. That is one way, and the other way we we are actually kept, um, actually is helping us to motivate them. Although I have to say, last week most of them didn't even know it. Is that we they can they get credits for university for participating. But it's interesting because maybe half of them they actually uh, apply and everything, and they didn't know they will get credits. So they did because they were really interested in participating, right? Which is I was. Uh, actually really happy with that. Uh, but of course, if they get credits, even better, right? So mm -hmm. that is also something that is helping us. And Anna always says that ways to motivate them, right? Whether there is a prize, whether it's um, the continuation of the project they, they, they propose or something that really keeps them going because otherwise it's okay, we do this and then we go and that's it, you know? So um, yeah, incentives, I would say. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Actually, thank you very much for sharing. Um, actually, the part of the um, credits is super interesting. Like, not only with work, like when you work with university students in this case, but maybe even like with uh, youngsters who work uh, or who are studying at more like vocational and training centers. Um, perhaps there's this also option. So, like, it's an interesting path. To... Yeah. So, thank you. Thank you. Now, for... now that you say that, in parallel. The same, at the same time we're doing this, we have two other members of our team, Carlos and, and, and another collaborator, doing another presentation for professional uh, vocation uh, students. Um, so we are offering this kind of experiences, the ones that Anne were mentioning earlier, immersive experiences, but also workshops and events and, and so on for them because we live in in practical experiences right so yeah that's something we are opening up uh in the next few months nice mm -hmm. nice yeah thank you thank you very much marina for for the question i think these are very insightful tips that we will keep in mind <laughs> yes and and anne elsa i just want to say thank you uh on behalf of youth proactive for this fantastic conversation, I, I, I feel very inspired by, by your work. I think I'm speaking on behalf of everybody that you are creating systemic change and you are very connected you know, to a different way of envision in the future, more sustainable and where rural and urban are not opposites. They can, we can create a complementarity between the two of them. And definitely. this is this is definitely personally and, you know, uh, from our work as well with young people in so many places, we can see that this is a reality. And I don't want to close uh, the conversation. Just, I just want to invite everybody. And this connects a lot with what Anna and Elsa have been explaining us more at the European level, um, the Green Deal. We are organizing a webinar about sustainable green Europe, which Personally, and this is the reason of this organization, it's a follow-up, uh, more political, more technical, but it's a follow-up of the practical experience that Anne and Elsa have been sharing with us today. So I kindly invite all of you 
to register to join us uh, to this upcoming webinar. It will be the last webinar before the summit break, and we will be there, you know, going deeper into European Green Deal, sustainable ways of building our future. So this is a nice way of continuing uh, the start of, you know, what we have seen today with Anna and, and Elsa, Anna and Elsa, sorry. So you have the QR code here, but as always, you will, you know, get several invitations in the coming weeks. So okay, I give you like perfect. 10 seconds uh, if you want, you know, to scan, otherwise you will receive an invitation. And again, um, muchísimas gracias. Thank you very much. I really wish you all the best uh, in, in the future of Pueblos Remotos and all these fantastic projects that you are implementing. They create you uh, all the best with the application, really. And <laughs> looking forward to collaborating in, in the future. And thank you. Thank you very much for, for this thank time you. with us. Thank, thank you. you very much. Thanks a lot. It was our pleasure. Thank you. Thank you for your time. <laughs>